Hey everyone, this is Anirudh from Edureka. In this session, let's have a quick introduction to TensorFlow. This is probably one of the most popular deep learning frameworks out there right now, guys. Well, this session is intended to be useful for anyone who's considering to start learning about TensorFlow and need an easy start. Or if you're considering building a career in deep learning as well. Well, let's begin by checking out the agenda for today, guys. This session is pretty much simple and straightforward. We'll be starting out with what TensorFlow actually is. Then we need to find out the easiest way to learn because I'm sure you guys are all excited to get started with TensorFlow, right? So then we need to check out on how we could get TensorFlow in your machine and get you coding. And then we'll talk a little bit about the architecture and the TensorFlow pipeline as well. So the overall agenda is to get you guys started with TensorFlow and to make sure that you do it in the easiest way possible. Well, let's begin. What is TensorFlow? Well, as per the textbook definition, it is an open source library which is used for numerical computation and large scale machine learning. Well, TensorFlow is beyond all that and it is an integral part of almost everything that involves machine learning or deep learning. It definitely is the brainchild of all the awesome people at Google and it's integrated with all of their apps as well. Well, I personally love anything open source. It opens up so much opportunities for development and improvement and all right. So it is available on desktop and mobile platforms as well, which is definitely a big positive and brings in more people. And well, this leads to one of the largest machine learning community coming together under one roof. So yes, TensorFlow has the largest community of learners and collaborators when compared to all the other deep learning frameworks right now. And majority of the big firms, everything from social media all the way till an airline company make use of TensorFlow. So TensorFlow definitely has some amazing industry traction. So let's get started. If TensorFlow is getting all this traction, I'm sure you guys are curious about why it became so popular, right? Well, I'm going to pick one of the amazing use cases that I personally used when I was on a tour. So consider this guys, you and your family are going to Japan for a vacation. Well, majority of the signboards are in Japanese and most of the people speak Japanese only. Well, this can be a problem as it leads to a huge communication gap. Well, let's see if TensorFlow can help us here somehow. Well, with image recognition systems integrated into Google applications, it makes it so seamless that I was blown away when I used it for the first time. Right, so you have Japanese board in front of you, which makes absolutely no sense to you because you don't know Japanese, right? Well, easy. Open up the Google Translate camera and just point it at the board and that's it. The entire text is translated for you in real time. Well, this is one among the major reasons there are millions of happy travelers who don't worry about their language barriers. Well, so basically, since it's open source, it is free and it makes sure that you don't get cheated upon in a foreign land as well. And what's even better is that you can convert entire documents at a single click as well. Well, guys, this is just one of the amazing use cases of TensorFlow and there are thousands more. And the best part about it is that it's real easy to get started with TensorFlow as well. Well, to be honest with you, there are many easy ways to get started with TensorFlow. In my opinion, Google Collaboratory is by far the easiest to get started. You might be wondering what Collaboratory is, right? Well, it's really simple. It's basically a Jupyter Notebook hosted on the Google Cloud Platform. It automatically allocates memory and provides you with all the tools that you need to get started. However, for complex computations, you will require the use of a GPU, right? Well, Google has got us covered there as well. Fast computations can now be done because Collaboratory allocates a GPU for us as well. All of this is done free and it's real cool. But there is another traditional approach that many of you guys might prefer, right? Which is definitely installing PyCharm and then installing all the modules inside it as well. But I prefer Google Collab just for its simplicity and ease of use. Plus, your code always stays on the cloud too. Well, now that we have set this foundation on TensorFlow, I'm sure you guys are really curious about why you should consider learning TensorFlow, right? Well, let me tell you this. At start, it might be a little overwhelming, but it's really simple. This is a typical learner's timeline here I have for you guys. You usually learn all the basic terminologies and the basic code and you end up training an image classifier, right? Well, when that is done, you push for a little bit more accuracy. Let's say 99% accuracy. By tweaking it, you get to a 99.9% .9 accuracy. Well, it doesn't matter to be honest with you guys. What matters is that what you're trying to predict and why. Where will it be used? Where's the data coming from and what could go wrong and stuff like that, right? It's really important to think through the design before messing with the accuracy, guys. Working on the purpose is more important because learning and establishing your concept into code has to be really easy and that it has to serve the purpose. Well, as I said, TensorFlow is a framework which is concept heavy as it has a lot of terminologies and little stuff that you need to be aware of. But the biggest advantage of this is that it makes it code light. Well, it's easier to learn concepts first and then implement them in a simple way, right? Well, the next part is where I've tried to cover a little bit of mathematics where learners tend to get confused. 
Well, majority of it is really complex math operations, but it can be really simplified. More on this in just a second. We quickly need to understand the difference between programming and machine learning, guys. So, with day to day programming, you're basically pushing some data and applying some rules on that data. Say instructions and conditions like if this, then do that, and so on. And eventually, you get an answer to your question. Well, with machine learning, it's a little bit different, guys. We already pushed the answer at the start along with the data. And then when we want to retrieve something, the machine learns and processes some rules all on its own. Well, say you have images of cats and dogs, right? You show your images the answer, which is the cat and the dog image, and that you provide data by telling it it is an image of a cat and a dog. And then you train a machine so that when you provide a random image, it is supposed to apply a rule set to check if that's a cat, dog, or whatever you're searching for. Well, it's as simple as that and coming back to math. There is one other simple concept that I'd really like to introduce here. Well, it's something called as linear regression. Well, what is linear regression? It's simple guys. It's just a statistical technique which is used to measure the relationship that exists between all of the variables. Well, let's check out this quick example. Consider the simple equation y is equal to w x plus b. Well, if you remember the school days where we found out slope of the line using y is equal to mx plus c. Well, this is pretty much similar to that guys. So we have some data and we ended up plotting our points for this case study where y is equal to 0.1 x plus 0.3. So TensorFlow comes in and basically plots this line to establish that relationship that I previously mentioned. Well, it's as simple as that. So now that that's done, moving on, I'm sure majority of you guys are familiar on how a neural network works. Well, if you don't know, not to worry. I will quickly walk you through how it goes with TensorFlow. Well, to begin with, we collect a data set that we need to work on. It can be anything, right? It can be images, audio snippets, or whatever that you're trying to classify. So with that data set, we'll be able to go on building the model with its architecture, basic node structure, and all of that. Well, next is to actually train the network so that it can understand something from the data and the input that you've given. And after training, we need to check how well it performs, so we evaluate it. Well, post-evaluation, we just end up predicting the data set and ensuring that our machine learned well. Well, generally, and even in case of TensorFlow, collecting the data set is well most of the work, to be honest with you guys. And building and establishing the model is just a few lines of code. However, training the network is just one line. Evaluation is simple as one line, and even prediction as well. Well, it's that easy, and it's made sure it's easy so that we can code better. So, good enough that we've established that, let's quickly jump into knowing how the TensorFlow architecture actually is. Guys, there is a quick prerequisite before we jump into the architecture. We need to know what a data flow graph actually is. Well, recall that equation we saw earlier y is equal to wx plus b. Well, w is nothing but the weight, x is nothing but the example, and b is nothing but the bias. It's similar to the computation graph we checked out earlier, so I will not stress on this much. So, to show you how TensorFlow works entirely, check this out. We have weights, biases, and examples, right? Well, Weights and examples are used to generate tensors by performing the matrix multiplication operation and then run an activation function on it. Well, you might be wondering what an activation function is. Well, an activation function is basically the step where the neuron learns to deliver an output based on the user input. That's it. And after that, the gradients are computed and lastly, weights and biases are updated for every epoch. Epoch? Well, what's an epoch? Well, the easiest way I can try to make you understand an epoch is consider this. You play the guitar. Well, so the guitar needs to be tuned. So while tuning, every time you play a string to check if it's correctly tuned or not. And if it's not, you end up turning the pegs to tune it, right? So consider every turn of that tuning peg to be an epoch. Well, it's as simple as that, guys. So while moving on, TensorFlow is classified really well. It is a cross-platform library, so you have a lot of freedom when you're coding. So basically, if you can take a look at the structure, it's mainly divided at the API layer. Well, that's where the user code mainly differs from the core runtime of TensorFlow. So everything about the C API is based on the user and mostly user dependent code. And everything below that is the layered architecture of TensorFlow. Well, to check out the execution phase of TensorFlow, it's really interesting guys. Basically, we hold the execution until the entire program becomes available to execute. Well, TensorFlow optimized the execution phase by using global information about the computation. Well, let me clarify better. Consider an example. So TensorFlow achieves high GPU utilization by using the graphs dependency structure to issue a sequence of kernels. So these kernels are issued to the CPU without waiting for intermediate results. Well, with this type of execution, TensorFlow offloads larger chunk of work to the accelerator so that it can be processed faster and that's about it. Well, to check in a little bit more on it, let's take a look at the workers device interactions guys. 
well you're curious i can tell what's a master and what's a worker right well a master is just used to create sessions for the workers and the workers take it from there as they basically execute operations in the graph to get a better picture check this out so we have a client who codes right and the master creates a session the workers work in this session to process the data and to provide the necessary output the worker service for each task is straightforward it handles requests from the master schedules the execution of the kernels and mediates direct communication between the tasks well tensorflow is actually optimized for running large graphs with low overhead so that's a real nice thing well now that we are done with the architecture let's look at some really basic code examples on how the pipeline can be established well guys there are five simple steps first we create the data create the placeholder and then defining the data set establishing the pipeline and lastly executing the operations let's begin by quickly looking at each of these steps well creating the data for the models is pretty much simple consider this code as you can see we have made use of numpy to generate just two random values for us at this point well the data can be obtained from multiple data sets such as mnist cifar 10 and so on it's extremely simple to load the data into tensorflow because it already has ready loaders for this purpose well now that that's done we need to take a look at something called as placeholders consider this piece of code guys it's really simple placeholders are nothing but variables but does it differ a little bit to all of the tensorflow variables well yes it does so placeholder variables basically allow us to create our operations and build on the computation graphs all of this can be done without needing the data in hand which is really good well with the placeholder established we need to define our data set it's done using the simple code and it takes the placeholder as the parameter guys a data set is basically the representation of the sequence of elements and every element consists of multiple tensors and it is as straightforward as that and now we have the iteration part of the pipeline where we initialize an iterator to do some tasks for us well what tasks simple we have some data in the pipeline right consider it to be chunks of data so we'll have chunk 1 chunk 2 etc so after the first chunk is processed we need a method to bring in this next set of data so this is why the iterator is used so check this out the data flow is pretty much simple first you initialize the pipeline and feed the initial data after that we need the next data to flow into the pipeline so we loop over the data to check until all of our data is consumed and that's about it and that brings us to our last step which is execution case as i previously explained all the operations happen within a session so we start this entire process by actually starting a session and in this case all we are trying to do is print out the output by running the session well to sum it up execution is basically the initialization of the session and then the session run operation is executed by the iterator feeding the values to the pipeline well in our case it's really easy because it was numpy so numpy values and then are populated by the placeholders right so after that we end up printing the results and we're done handling the simple data well that's how simple the tensorflow pipeline is guys so moving on let's quickly conclude this session i have three main highlights for you guys firstly it's keras well consider keras to be the lego building block and that you guys can work on keras easily as it's an api which works on top of tensorflow it works on top of theano and other major deep learning frameworks as well but it majorly runs on tensorflow so guys i just put out a keras tutorial video so make sure you check it out on this channel and next we have something called as eager execution it's simple basically it's a fancy name to tell us that tensorflow code is as easy to execute as one of the generic python codes that's about it and tf data guys there is a lot of concepts to learn such as layers hyperparameters like optimizers and all of that well my opinion is that you guys take it real slow and understand what each component does and how it interacts with others in the pipeline and lastly there is an amazing array of information tutorials blogs and even a masters program with edureka that i want you guys to check out well mainly i want to redirect you guys to the tensorflow video we have curated by one of the deep learning experts here well i will leave a link in the description box below so make sure to check it out well we all love machine learning don't we and this is one amazing community to be a part of so that is it from this small session guys i hope you took away some real good points from here and that this helped you kick start your learning you know what to do if you have any queries head to the comment section below and leave a comment let's discuss more on this there and make sure to subscribe to our channel for more information on the latest technologies and the courses offered i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest 
do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!